there is about 2,000 pounds worth of costs and expenses associated with buying a house. In today's video, I'm going to break down these costs for you. Hi, my name is Gina. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my channel is filled with lots of tips and tricks to help you save time and money. So let's get straight to the additional cost of buying the house. The first fee is called the mortgage arrangement fee, also known as the booking fee or the reservation fee. This is usually the biggest expense and expect to pay anywhere between 500 to 2000 pounds for this fees. Most people tend to add this cost to their mortgage cost. For example, if you have a mortgage of 150,000 pounds and a uh, arrangement fee of thousand pounds you can add this thousand pounds to the mortgage cost the disadvantage is you pay the interest rate on the additional thousand pounds as well but you can always overpay by this thousand pounds at a later date so it's not a big deal the big advantage though is you get a big chunk of money for other additional costs for example buying a furniture for a new home also the other big advantage is if you pay for this you'll usually have to pay it up front so if the mortgage deal or anything falls through you may lose the money for the mortgage arrangement fee so it is advisable to add this cost onto the mortgage sometimes it's good to pay a lower arrangement fee but a higher interest rate i will put a link in the description box below for the website that i use to compare two mortgages with the additional costs the second additional expense is broker fees most people do not have to pay these broker fees because there's a lot of fee-free mortgage products wherein the fees for the mortgage advisor is paid by the lender. In certain circumstances, it might be advisable to go to a paid mortgage advisor. And it's mostly advisable when you have some credit issues. When we bought this house, we had just recently become self-employed. And like I told you previously, the fees for the mortgage advisor comes from the lender. So certain products do not have fees. So then the mortgage advisor do not recommend those products to us. So in certain circumstances, it is advisable to go to a paid mortgage advisor. The average brokerage fee is between 500 to 1000 pounds. But always make sure you do not pay any upfront cost to the mortgage advisor. It's only cost on completion. What we did is we first went to a fee-free broker who said that there is no products available. Then we paid another mortgage advisor who then found us a product that was suitable for us. And we paid him his fees on completion of the contract. The third additional expense is the valuation expense or the survey expense. There is two or three layers to this expense. The very basic is the valuation expense. And the bank always asks for this, but you pay for it. And it's about 250 pounds. This valuation fee is to benefit the bank to make sure the bank will get their money back and the property is worth as much as we're paying for it. So it is to value the property. The survey fees is to benefit you, the buyer, and it's to assess for structural problems or any dampness or any rot, etc. There is two layers for this. Most people buy the home buyer's report, which is about 500 pounds. But if you're buying a period property or a really rundown property, then you want to go for the full structural survey, which is about 800 or 900 pounds. If there is any problems identified at the survey, for example, if the valuation is not as high as you're offered, or if there's any additional repairs that needs to be done, you can use this as a negotiation tool to knock a little bit off the asking price. Most mortgage companies have their own valuators and most people go with the bank's own valuator. You can also arrange for your own valuator based on recommendations from people and things. This is slightly different if you're buying in Scotland. In, in Scotland, people do not normally have to pay for a survey. This is usually done for by the seller of the house and is included in the home buyer's report. Next big expense is a solicitor's fees, also known as a conveyancing cost. Most mortgage companies also has a conveyancing solicitor as part of their team, but they often tend to be more expensive. So it's best to go with an independent conveyancer. The solicitor does a lot of checks. They check with the council, they check with the land registry, they check the source of your funds and where your money is coming from for the deposit and things. They link up with the estate agent as well as the mortgage advisor as well as the solicitor from the seller's party. So that's what you pay for. And the average cost is between 900 and 1,500 pounds. Some solicitors give a cheap upfront cost of 500 or 600 pounds and then have this additional expense of chaps or the pay for this search and pay for that search. So if you're shopping around with solicitors and getting quotes of different solicitors, ask them to give you a completed quote with all the additional and extra charges. Next additional cost is stamp duty. So currently in September 2020, there is a stamp duty holiday 
and this offer is up to March 2021. I've done a complete video on stamp duty holiday, so feel free to check it out where I've gone into full detail about it. But basically, up to £500,000 property, you do not pay any stamp duty. And between £500,000 to £925,000, you pay a 5% uh, stamp duty. So if your property is around £600,000, you do not pay any stamp duty for the first £500,000. And you pay a 5% stamp duty for the next £100,000, which is £5,000. There's a lot of rush in the property market to beat the stamp duty holiday deadline. And some of the property prices have inflated because of the demand for properties at present. So you may want to wait till after the stamp duty holiday period has passed. The next big expense as soon as you buy a property is home insurance. All mortgage companies insist on having a home insurance. So this is to pay for things that happen to the property, for example, fire or floods or anything like that. So if there's any damage to the property, the mortgage company still gets their money back for the property. And the rough cost for home insurance is between 130 to 200 pounds. It is always best to go to a comparison site to shop for your home insurance. And ensuring your contents or not is optional and it's up to you. The next expense is removal costs. For some people, it might be just a few trips in the car. But if you were renting an unfurnished flat, you will want to move your furniture and things. And the average cost is about 100 to 200 pounds. You can choose to hire a van and drive it yourself. Or you can hire a man in a van and they can help you with the moving. The next expense is furniture. If you're a first time buyer, you probably don't have a lot of furniture. And you can get furniture from family and friends. There's also other places like Facebook Marketplace or an eBay and things to buy good quality secondhand furniture. So let's total up these expenses as a first time buyer with a property value of £250,000. Arrangement fee I put between zero and £1,000. I put zero because you can add this to your mortgage. So it's not an initial expense as you're exchanging on the property. The mortgage broker fee I put at zero. Stamp duty I put at zero again. Valuation fee, most people pay for the home buyer's report, which is around £500. Solicitor's cost, I've put around £1,200. Insurance cost, I've put around £130, which is on the lower end of the spectrum. So just with this, you need an additional of £1,830. And to add to that, if you have a little bit of moving expense or a little bit of furniture expense, it can be well over £2,000. I've calculated this as a first-time buyer. If you're a second-time buyer selling your first property, you may have extra conveyancing costs for selling your property and estate agent fees for selling your property. So you'll definitely be paying more than this £1,800. So as excited as you are to move into your new house, don't forget to plan and budget for these additional expenses. If you've liked today's video, please give me the thumbs up like button and share this with a family or friend who may be buying their first home. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more time and money saving videos on a Tuesday and on a Friday. Before you go, you may want to check out my other videos, especially the video on the stamp duty holiday that I've discussed in this video. Thank you for watching me today and stay safe. Bye-bye.